All right, guys, so for today's video, I'm gonna kind of talk about what my trainings looked like, what it looks like right now, what I'm doing. So people have asked a lot of questions about how do you balance the running and lifting? How do you do all this stuff at the same time? And it's kind of similar to, I watched a recent Nick Bear video as far as he was talking about it. And he said that the big misconception people have is that you're spending more time than you were before on training all this stuff so it's almost like i'm not adding the running on top of the lifting in the sense that it's more time i'm learning to do a little less with with lifting to be able to do more with the running so i'm kind of trying to balance them out so very efficient sessions um so with that being said the lifting you know i would say it takes around 45 minutes to an hour and i try to be really efficient with it i try to get in get out I try to keep the rest periods short, that sort of thing. And that's made a huge difference as far as being able to get it all done. So that's one of the big things that, you know, I would talk about early on here. Uh, now, as far as what it looks like, so I'll kind of just map this out, I'll get right to it. Uh, so Monday through Saturday, I'm training. Sunday is my loan off day every week. Sunday, I usually go to church with the family. Um, getting a lot of work done that sort of thing so i kind of just treat sunday as a rest day that's the one day no running no lifting nothing um but other than that six days a week i'm doing something i'm training so this is what the split looks like right now i'm prioritizing squat and bench and i'm actually prioritizing squat for two reasons because i think squat is going to carry over extremely well to my deadlift max without really having to deadlift and deadlift was actually riling up my low back more than squats were. So for those two reasons, I'm kind of leaning into squat. And a third reason actually is that, you know, having stronger legs does give me noticeably more uh, pop up hills and such while running. It definitely helps having stronger quads. So there's a few reasons why I'm almost leaning into squats as far as training, even though the ultimate goal might be a 700 pound deadlift under the current circumstances. So actually Monday, so Monday is basically a tempo run or a lactate threshold run. So those are kind of similar terms. They're similar things. And that's just where I'm running a certain faster pace um, for a, a certain period of time. And it could be intervals at this pace, or it could be one longer run at this pace. Uh, for instance, yesterday I did a 730 pace for about 18 minutes straight after a warm up, and then that was followed by um, a little other, some other stuff basically. But 18 minutes at 7:30 pace, which is basically half marathon goal pace. So the half marathon is November 11th. I, we got 15 weeks. I officially signed up for the Secret City Half Marathon uh, a couple days ago, so that's locked in. And the goal for that has been sub 140, 140 being a 137 pace. Um, so obviously I'd have to sustain that, you know, this 7.30ish pace for over an hour and a half. Um, so I've got a long ways to go still. I've got a long ways to go if, if that's right now about the 20 minute limit. But I'm encouraged. I feel like once the heat dissipates, things will get better. And I've actually, I look back on how far I've come in the last five months, the last 23 weeks that I've been doing this. And it's pretty remarkable even month to month to see the progress. So I would say just like with lifting, you know, I'm getting, I got newbie gains and now things are slowing down a little bit more as I've done this longer, but it's encouraging to see the progress on that. So the tempo run, lactate threshold run on Monday typically be about an hour or a little less. And then I will squat after very high volume squats. So it could be anywhere from four to eight sets of squats. Um, basically, it could be as low as three reps, it could be as high as eight reps. So just changing it up all the time, but doing squats after the running, because I've, I've learned if I squat before running, my legs are shot. And usually my legs are pretty shot the day after squats. So I schedule all my squats to where the next day is an easy run. And that way there's not as much of an effect. It doesn't matter as much if my legs are a little dead. So that's what a Monday would look like. So we're looking at an investment of about two hours of training there. Tuesday, 
I will uh, I'll bench early. So I've been benching recently at 5:30 a.m. between 5:30 and 6:30. So 5 a.m. I get to the gym to open it, and then 6:30 I have my first in-person you know personal training client. So I try to do bench in between that period, and I will do 10 sets of bench and just get that knocked out. And again, the rep range is very here, but I knock out bench. That's you know high volume, high specificity. That that is proven to be a form, formula for success in the past on bench. So that's working for me now on this road to 350. 350 is the bench goal. Um, and with these goals, I should say that the goal is to be able to do all this around the same time. Maybe not exactly in the same day, but in the same week. So if I can do the sub one hour, 40 minute half marathon, the, the 350 bench and the 700 pound deadlift all at that same time period, kind of at the end of the year, that would be ideal. So obviously the, the half marathon is November and I'm looking at the uh, Gritmas Classic SPF powerlifting meet December 9th. So I'm not really like stuck with one federation anymore to where I'm like, I have to do USPA or I have to do WRPF or even I have to go drug test and go USAPL. Um, that's not really where my mind's at. So I'm just kind of rolling with whatever federation I feel like and just one meet a year at this point. So SPF is looking like it's where it's going to be at. And the timing's great as far as December 9th. It's only an hour and a half from the house. So that's kind of what I'm looking at. But I want these are the goals for the end of the year. Um, a while back, I kind of talked about maybe a five minute mile goal, but I don't know how realistic that's going to be. Truthfully, um, I'm learning that's going to take a lot of work. So right now, I think I could run a mile about 640. So that's a ways off from, you know, a five minute mile. That's 12 mile an hour pace for four laps around the track. So yeah, that's, that's a long ways off, but I'm, I'm still, you know, playing with the idea in my head of a 500 squat, five minute mile goal like uh, four guys have done so far. So Fergus Crawley, Jack Driscoll, um, Adam Klink, and then I think there's like one other guy who's done it. So that's kind of a neat goal I've thought about. But getting off on a tangent here, Tuesday is an easy run, about five miles. Usually that'll take 45 minutes. Knock that out, and then I will do the, uh, do the bench that morning, like I said. So that's about another, we're looking at hour and 45, two hours of training. Wednesday, more of the same. This will be a track or hill workout usually, about an hour in length. And it could be anything. It varies up. It varies quite a bit. It could be, like I said, it could be hills. It could be track, a track workout, whatever, speed workout. And then I will do the squats afterward again, very similar to Monday, just different rep ranges, different intensity ranges. It's about a two-hour investment there. Thursday, we got another five-mile easy run about 45 minutes with bench in the morning for about an hour. So again, hour 45, two hours there. And then Friday is the more time committed day. That is the long run each week, which is basically a minimum of 10 miles. This week it's supposed to be 12 miles. And this one will be, that'll take anywhere from an hour and a half to um, upwards of two hours. <coughs> And then I will do the squats afterwards. So that day we could be looking at two and a half to three hours of training. And then we get to uh, Saturday, final training day of the week. Again, an easy run, five miles or so with bench. And bench is a little later that day because I sleep in on Saturdays till seven. And Sundays I sleep until eight. So weekdays I'm waking up at 4.30. Weekends I'm sleeping in a little bit. But that kind of shows you that most training days are two hours total of training investment time very manageable you know i have a lot of commitments as well with the form in the form of in-person training clients online guys um the channel getting back to posting content on instagram all that sort of stuff so that's it's still manageable you know i i said this on um instagram i get my runs in when my baby daughter goes down for her nap so this makes it to where i'm often not running at the, the ideal time it's it's Ideal time would be early in the morning um, to get it over with, but I'm usually running. I'm heading out the door at like noon, so it's it's not quite peak heat of the day, but it's pretty hot out, and that's just what you got to do. You got to work with the cards you're dealt. So sometimes I just have to head out the door, you know, later 
And I, I, I'd like to get it done when it's not so hot. It'll be 90 degrees. It'll be a dew point of 75 degrees. But you just get used to it and you make it work. So fortunately, July is the hottest month of, of the year for most of the U.S. That's behind me now. August, like this week's a little cooler. Still hot, but not quite as bad. The dew point's not as bad. It's not as muggy. But I, I make it work with that. And I try to just fit these things in with my schedule when I can, guys. So like... I wouldn't ideally bench at 5.30 in the morning. I'm not as strong at 5.30 as I would be at 2.30 or 11.30 for that matter. But it's when I, make, it's when I can make it work. It's, it's, I try to have it affect my life as little as possible so that I can still get my work done, spend time with my family, my wife and daughter and, and parents. My parents moved here a couple months ago. I see them about three days a week, which you know is another blessing. I went from seeing my parents once or twice a year when they lived in Wisconsin, where I'm from, to seeing them three days a week. So that's pretty cool to have that opportunity. Now I try to take advantage of that. I try to read you know, to my daughter every night. I try to spend time with her and I try to have that, you know, the running interferes as little as possible. So I get the runs done when she's asleep on her nap. It's perfect. And that's just kind of how you have to kind of figure out with your training, how can I make it work? You know, you can fit this stuff in, um, you can make it work time-wise it doesn't have to take up four hours a day now I think another misconception people have is people really I've gotten this a lot lately where they're like don't you think you're healthier due to being off PEDs so I posted about how I think running has been transformative to my health and I'm getting a lot of uh, pushback not a, not a lot but I've gotten some pushback in terms of people saying is it more from being off PEDs but the problem, the fallacy with this logic is I've been off PEDs for two and a half years. No testosterone, no nothing. Um, I was off PEDs in February, obviously. Been over two years at that point. My body weight was about 240 pounds. So I was 240 pounds and I still had the sleep apnea, the high blood pressure. Not super high, but higher blood pressure. Not like crazy high like it was on PEDs. And my blood work definitely wasn't as good. Now I'm 200 pounds. Single digit body fat, um, best shape of my life. My blood works really, really good. And that is attributed to the cardio and the running. So yes, the cardio in the sense of it's given me the, the weight loss. Um, it's, it's gotten the weight off to where I feel better and I perform better. And that's where the running has been transformative even more so than the PEDs, coming off the PEDs. Because I'm just in the state where I'm much lighter, much leaner and much healthier and my body's more efficient. And that's basically what I'm getting at with the transformative effect that the running has enabled me to do. And I've added in, I've added back in a pound of grass-fed ground beef per day, but I'm, I'm still able with the running to have things like ice cream and pizza in the evenings. So I do think getting away from the beef was a mistake because it, it lowered my iron levels and I wasn't as strong. I didn't have that creatine source naturally. Um, I didn't have higher red blood cells, so I've gotten back to that, but I still can have some stuff that I enjoy in the evenings because of the running, because it's burning so many calories. So, you know, my step count usually is about 18, 17, 18,000 steps a day. And on the long run day, it can be 25,000, 27,000 plus, but that helps a lot with burning calories. So that's another thing where I think running's really helped. Uh, but that's kind of what the schedule looks like and um, you make it work. You just make this stuff work with your life. You know, I'm about to be 32 in 23 days and there's a lot more responsibilities. There's a lot more on my plate. There's a lot more to balance. I try to keep a lot of people happy. It's it's difficult. So it's it's just one of those things though where it's like you make it work and you try to do your best with it. You try, to, you try to find somewhat of a balance, but I'm still pushing hard towards my goals. That doesn't change. Um, I'm not going to slack on those. And, and the thing with running, it's a unique challenge. It's just such a unique challenge. Obviously, it affects my strength. I'm not even close to as strong as I was, but that puts these goals into a greater perspective. You know, you don't have to have one or the other. You don't have to just lift weights and be unhealthy and not be able to um, run at all and have high blood pressure and all that sort of stuff. You don't have to go just that route and you don't have to go to a frail runner guy either. You can have a balance where you can have a pretty good physique, have a lot of muscle, be one of the bigger runners, be muscular and still have a pretty good bench. And I would consider it, let's say 195, 
you know, the, the lowest I've gotten truthfully after a run, albeit was 197. So let's just say like 195. I would consider a 350 bench with no TRT off, you know, off all this stuff really good. I would consider a 700 pound deadlift and a 500 pound squat really good. So like, yes, these numbers may pale in comparison to what I've done before, but under all the circumstances of having the, the elite cardiovascular shape, um, an elite by everyday standards, like I obviously know there's way people way faster, but just if we compare ourselves to the everyday person, you know, those are elite numbers all across the board. And while I do watch other people for motivation, I watch Nick Bear, I watch uh, Jeremy Miller, those are the main two, Jack Driscoll, these kind of guys, um, you know, I still realize that like, I'm, I, it's my own journey. I can only be better than I was yesterday. So I try to strive. I've really taken it to heart more now than ever to be just a little better than I was the day prior. If I can improve my times a little more, if I can be in a little better shape, that's what matters. If I can be a little stronger, that sort of thing. So the goals may not blow you guys away now, but I think it's a really good balance. I feel amazing. Um, and that's what this channel and what I'm trying to empower people to do now all around is to get to where they're focused on i want the strength because strength is the root of who i am that's that's what i've always wanted to, to strive for that's who i've been that's what i've been about powerlifting that's my background and uh, i still want to strive for that strength i think you all should but also having some of that cardiovascular shape endurance which will in turn improve your health so strength endurance health that's what i'm all about that's what i want y'all to strive for um as far as having that balance and then pushing all out in those endeavors so it's a balance of sorts but you're still pushing as hard as you can in each of those focal points and that's what i want to do to you for you guys so if you guys like the video if you found um if you found this to be useful information please subscribe it helps there's only about 50 percent of you guys who are subscribed who watch the videos so if you're interested in seeing me go down this path the race is coming up i have huge plans for next year huge this is like laying the foundation right now this year. The plans for next year are massive. There's, there's no other way to put it. So this year's the foundation. Next year is stuff's getting real. Um, but if you find value in this content, please subscribe and everything and support the channel. Like the video, comment, and I appreciate you guys. I know it's been a change, but thank you.